call to order the town council special meeting of uh, not September, July 10th, 2017. Small glitch there. Mr. Schaefer, please call the roll. Certainly. Councilor Colteritis appears to be absent. Councilor Mellon also appears to be absent. Councilor Nelmans present is present. Councilor Reed present is present. President Simonetto present is present. With uh, three members of the council being present, I would suggest that all the votes being taken tonight to be roll call so that it can be evidence that a majority of the uh, members entitled to vote did vote in the affirmative. Okay. Please rise for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, a moment of silence for our troops wherever they may be, our police officers, our fire, and first responders. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our first order of business tonight is Boy Scouts Troop number 533 resolution. And I will read that shortly. And this is resolution 2028, a resolution formally recognizing the 90th anniversary of Boy Scout Troop number 533 and its accomplishments. Whereas Boy Scout Troop 533 was organized in 1927 by Mr. Maury Craig, an eighth grader attending Munster Public Schools who gathered classmates, local boys, and a retired school principal to form Munster's Boy Scout Troop. And whereas Troop 533 has positively influenced countless Munster families by leading many boys to success and producing over 100 Eagle Scouts. And whereas Troop 533 has had a succession of wonderful Scout Masters, including a soldier named Ray Caskey, who encouraged long military drills and marching. And whereas Troop 533 was present on June 14, 1927, when President Coolidge dedicated Wicker Park in Highland, Indiana. And whereas the Munster Lions Club, founded in the 1930s, sponsored Troop 533. And whereas Troop 533 became heavily involved in the World War II effort by organizing parades and rallies for war bonds, planting and maintaining gardens for local consumption, practicing blackout drills, carrying warden messages and reports to sector headquarters, and participating in wartime recycling programs. Whereas the dawn of Cub Scouting in the 1960s, Troop 533 organized PACs in the Munster Elementary Schools. And whereas in 1982, the town of Munster requested that Troop 533 do a presentation of colors in dedication of the first town council meeting held in the town's newly constructed municipal complex. And whereas in 1983, Troop number 533 began leading the Independence Park 4th of July parade, which it continues to do to this day. And whereas in 1993, Troop 533 was approached by the Munster Park District to put on Fright Night, later renamed a Night Walk in Beaker Woods. And whereas in September 2008, Troop 533 assisted with filling sandbags to prepare for the Little Calumet River flood and helped with yard cleanup, raking, moving dirt, and re-graveling driveways after the flood. And whereas in 2017, Troop Number 533 initiated flags across Munster with 120 customers and an intention to expand this program. And whereas the town of Munster is in favor of allowing Troop Number 533 to hold the celebration in town to honor their 90th anniversary, now therefore be it resolved that the town of Munster publicly recognizes and congratulates Troop Number 533 for providing 90 years of service to the community and continuing to be a very active organization. 
resolved and adopted this 10th day of July, 2017, by the Town Council of the Town of Munster, Lake County, Indiana, by a vote of, and we will have to wait for that to be filled in. Do I uh, hear a motion? I'll make that motion to adopt this uh, proclamation. Resolution. Resolution. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on it? Do we still need to do that since we've got uh, honor? Please call the roll. Certainly. The, and the record will show that uh, Councilor Colbert has joined us. He's not present and he didn't vote. So, with that, uh, Councilor Colbert Yes. Votes yes. Councilor Mellon is absent. Councilor Mellon is. Yes. Votes yes. Councilor Reed. Yes. Votes yes. President Salmonetto. Yes. Votes yes. Votes four to zero. Four to zero. In favor and zero opposed. Is there someone here from the Boy Scouts that would like to say a few words? If so, please come to the podium <coughs> and state your name and uh, welcome. My name is John Dodge. I'm the uh, Adult Committee Chairman for Troop 533. Um, I would like to thank you uh, tremendously for your recognition. Uh, an organization like Boy Scouts uh, uh, doesn't exist for 90 years without the support of uh, the community, especially its town's leaders, uh, countless volunteers over the years, and the community at large. So, thank you very much. Uh, although Troop 533 is 90 years old, we're not slowing down. Uh, we just this week are sending or have sent 30 scouts and scouters to Boy Scout Camp in Ohio, uh, where they're earning merit badges, uh, working on their scout skills, all with the goal ultimately of becoming an Eagle Scout. Uh, earlier uh, this summer, uh, we took two camping trips on the same week, uh, one with younger scouts to uh, uh, develop their skills, uh, and then a high adventure trip to Kentucky, where we uh, canoed, rock climbed, zip lined, uh, and backpacked in the Daniel Boone National Forest Program. Uh, and I'm here to tell you, if you've never taken a zip line uh, 2,000 feet across a 500 foot gorge in the rain, uh, I highly recommend it. It's actually a lot of fun. Uh, we have also uh, completed our latest Eagle project. Uh, ben Shelton uh, uh, is, uh, uh, has, has completed his, his project, which was to refurbish the Westminster uh, uh, Church Preschool uh, play lot. Uh, we have four more Eagle Scout projects in the pipeline, which will benefit uh, local churches, service organizations, uh, the high school and uh, uh, Centennial Park. Uh, the 4th of July was quite busy for us. We marched in two parades. We were honored to lead uh, uh, the, what we call the Kitty Parade in the morning and to march uh, in the main parade in the afternoon. Uh, and we also completed uh, our second phase of our Flags Across Munster project, which we're, we are as a community service slash fundraiser where we charge residents $25 and in return a scout will post a flag in their yard on Memorial Day. Fourth of July and Veterans Day. Uh, they salute the flag in the morning, salute the flag in the evening, and take it down. We've seen a lot of positive response for that, and we're hopeful that uh, they continue to see uh, Again, thank you uh, on behalf of our troop. Uh, we appreciate your recognition, uh, and we look forward to many more years of service in our, in our community in the future. Thank, thank you. you so much, and uh, I'd like to present this to you. But going forward, I'd like to say that scouting is as much a part of American heritage as is apple pie and the rest of it. I mean, it goes back a long way. Most of us have been scouts in one form or another. And uh, it's a great character builder, team builder, and uh, it teaches you many, many valuable things going forward in your life. And we'd like to thank you. Thank you for everything that you do for Monster and all the others. Thanks again. Thank you. Do we have a report on the grade separation, Joe? Uh, yes, we do. All right. Good evening, everyone. The um, evening, Joe. Uh, the uh, as I the last meeting, it's uh, not a lot of change. We have met with our structural team, 
they're going full speed ahead to finalize everything that we've got. Um, the, the biggest challenge is the T wall change we had. We had a lot of things go back and forth with that, but that's moving out, moving ahead very well. The right away acquisition is still moving forward. Um, so we've got some um, some issues with that, but it's something that's going to work out with uh, with the buyers and everything that we have. So we're working through that process also. <coughs> we do have a new contact with BP Alice, who we had before, it was very helpful. Is no longer there. There's someone new. I spent you know, two weeks ago about half a day going over everything, bringing them up to speed. Um, we may have some comments back, but uh, at least they're up to speed on what we've got going on with it. But we still do not have a date for the railroad meeting. Uh, those agreements are still being reviewed in Homewood. But we are getting a response from the railroad in regards to our permits. Um, we had requested a permit for a sewer crossing, storm sewer crossing. We got something back this morning. Uh, I have some questions about it. I'm trying to reach them. I haven't got any response from today. But that was sent in two weeks ago. So the person that took over out of Flint is actually responding to us as far as that's concerned. They are responding to NIMSCO as far as their permits are concerned. So these things are, at least he is moving and he's, he's jumped in and he's moving ahead with it. So that's been pretty good. Um, and that's about all that I have as far as anything else. Thank you. Any questions for Joe? No, sir. No? All right. Thank, Thank you very much, Joe. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. Good to hear that that's continuing to move on. Uh, I know a lot of residents are anxious to see it start. So are we. This brings us to the open to the public. Two minutes maximum per person for five minutes for a group spokesperson. Please keep your comments civil and constructive to public policy issues. The chair at its sole discretion may recognize individuals wishing to speak on different topics and at any time may end the open to the public session. All speakers will be timed by the clerk treasurer. This portion of the meeting shall not exceed 20 minutes. If there's anyone wishing to address the council, please come to the podium, state your name and address. short list of things. Um, number one, the fireworks this year were spectacular. I heard we had a new um, vendor. Yes, we did. Um, they were really terrific. I hope we can get them back again. Great, thank you. Next year. People are still talking about it. I, was with I think it's a three year. It is. Yeah. I was with a bunch of neighbors um, yesterday and people were still talking about it. Um, my second thing is that some towns have public study sessions for adding things to uh, council meeting agendas. How does our town handle those discussions? Say that again. Some towns have like a study session that's open to the public for discussing things to get on the agenda for town council meetings where votes and decisions are made. How does Munster handle that? I sit with the town manager, our clerk treasurer's office, and um, we go over the items that are pending on the agenda. And that is an open meeting. But Dustin? Also, I'm sorry, I'll just have to talk loud. Uh, you, you, what you're doing right now is kind of like a study session. Uh, there have been, you know, just numerous examples of someone coming to the dance, asking a question, and then council either directing me to administratively take care of it or convening special meetings. I mean, look at the whole Ridge Road thing. That came because you uh, and other residents said you should look at this, and uh, council did. So that's usually how something gets on an agenda is someone comes to council and asks for it to happen. And it seems to be working because there's been many, many issues that end up on the council agenda based on public feedback. Uh, just as, a, as, a, as an observer of council, because usually I'm there when they're around, and also uh, interaction with council members. I've been asked by mem uh, a number of council members to put a certain thing on the agenda or to run something down because they had a conversation with a resident. And if I might add too, when we do have work studies, and we don't have a lot of work studies, those are all public unless it's something announced as executive, which would be personnel and that would be closed. But otherwise, they are open to the public. And work studies are set for a specific purpose. I noticed that there is one next week. Yes, ma'am. What is that for? That's that's the, oh, go ahead, Justin. That's to discuss the specifics of the funding and how of the grade separation project 
and the steps necessary to make sure that project stays on track uh, and is funded appropriately. And because of the nature of uh, that work study and how Indiana requires you to publicly notice things, that's really the only thing that will be covered there, is that grade separation project. Right, I get, I get that, I get that, how that works. Um, thank you. Um, I noticed there was also something on the agenda about the 2018 budget schedule. Um, are we in fiscal year 2018? Yes, sir. Our fiscal year is our calendar year. Okay. No, we're not in fiscal so year 18 next year. now. For that. next year. We're in 17. So now. where could somebody find a copy of the 2017 one? In my office. Great. Thank you. Um, let me just make a note of that. Okay. And then my final thing is that uh, in talking with the neighbors, somebody raised that everybody on their cable bill pays a franchise fee to Comcast that somehow goes to the town to record meetings Not or to broadcast record. meetings? No. We, no? It's given to us, and I think we use it to maintain our uh, antenna, the antennas that are on the water towers. <coughs> that money goes to the technology fund, it's, and it's used for technology needs computers, the servers, all the hardware, um, that kind of thing. But that is a fee that the town receives we do. from. It's yes. 5%, I think. Yeah, it's a certain percentage, and the town gets a distribution for that. I don't remember how many times a year that comes in. Do you know how many dollars it is? Off the top of my head, I don't know what it is. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Going once, twice, three times. Oh, now close. We open to the public session and we'll move to the consent agenda. Councilor is what's your place? I move to approve the consent agenda as prepared. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? There being none, Mr. Schaefer, please call the roll. Uh, Councillor Colvarathis, I abstain. Abstains. Councillor uh, Mellon is still <laughs> absent. Councillor Mellon. Uh, Mellon's. Yes. Votes yes. Councillor Reed. Yeah. Votes yes. President Sammonetto. Yes. Votes yes. The vote is three to zero to one. Thank you. That brings us to general orders. And we have none at this time. New business. Adoption of revised. 2017 regular park board meeting time change. They want to meet at a different time. Yes, they had a discussion at the last park board meeting and they'd like to shift their meetings from 7 p.m. to 5 p.m. And then they would be held typically on the third Tuesday every month, but it would be at 5 p.m. instead of 7 p.m. Thank you. The board members felt that that would work out well in their schedules and would also work out well with the staff. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make that motion to approve the uh, meeting, regular meeting schedule change for the park board meeting and time change. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? There being none, Mr. Schaefer, please call the roll. Certainly. Councilor Colbert. Yes. Votes yes. Councilor Nellon. Yes. Votes yes. Councilor Reed. Yes. Votes yes. President Samadetto. Yes. Votes yes. Four to zero. That takes us to our next item, which is the uh, 2017 Centennial Village Bonds Engagement Letter. <coughs> Any comments about this? Uh, this is uh, just some housekeeping issues. This is a contract for services, uh, and as a contract, you have to approve it. We've used City Securities as our underwriting uh, and placement agent for previous bond issues related to uh, Centennial Village and for other bond issues. Uh, City Securities was acquired by uh, Stipple earlier this year, and they know our book of business. They work closely with Umball, our financial advisor, and we would like to uh, sign this letter of engagement so we can stay on track to issue the last amount of funding due to the developer for the development agreement. Thank you. Is there any questions or comments or discussion? I would entertain a motion. Mr. President, will we authorize the town manager to execute the letter of engagement with Stipple? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? 
Mr. Green, none. Mr. Schaefer, please call the roll. Sir, the Councilor Colderitis. Yes. Votes yes. Councilor Nellens. Yes. Votes yes. Councilor Reed. Yes. Votes yes. President Simonetto. Yes. Votes yes. Board is zero. That takes us to the 2018 budget calendar. <coughs> We have before you a, uh, what lies, well, we really can understand why there was some confusion over what you're to supply to because the first entry on the schedule uh, occurred last April. But this is all done in preparation for next year's budget. The next uh, landmark date that we anticipate is the uh, department heads submitting their forecasted expenditures and revenue estimates to the clerk treasurer's office by July 21st. We need that kind of a lead time in order to get things in proper form for review by the Department of Local Government Finance in August. And then we keep working the budget. Uh, hopefully the uh, town council will want to uh, participate by having possibly have the meetings with the, uh, the staff to discuss the proposed budget. And uh, we're required to publish the uh, proposed hearing, the uh, proposed budget, make it available. Uh, let's see. Well, we don't have to publish in the newspaper anymore, do we? Not in the newspaper. Okay. okay. It's available online. And then uh, the statutory requirement for the uh, adopting next year's budget is November 1st. We anticipate the uh, town council taking the final action on next year's budget on October the 16th. <coughs> Call your attention to the uh, public hearing on October the 2nd. <coughs> That's it. Okay, thank you, David. Is there any questions for our clerk treasurer? Any comments? Any discussion? This is information, there's no action required on our part. True. Huh. Okay, we'll move on. That takes us to uh, Nipsco Eastman. Uh. This easement is requested from uh, Nipsco. Uh, it is directly west of the current distribution center for Whole Foods. There is a town of Munster property along the CSX railroad between those buildings where Whole Foods is and GE Appliance is primarily for stormwater retention. Uh, that is a long rectangle uh, that runs north south. Nipsco needs a 15 foot wide easement across the uh, topmost portion of our property to place three uh, utility poles because they are running uh, new service to Franciscan for their new emergency room and they're planning to develop and build out of their hospital campus is, is basically what they're turning into. So to meet the needs of that uh, growing customer, they need to run some additional service from the uh, substation directly north, that's south of uh, Public Works and west of the Lake Business Center, that big uh, physical facility there, if you ever look at Google Maps, no. you're gonna run it south and then uh, across our property and then uh, continue south to Francisca. So, Thank you. We have utility no easement. anticipated need for that easement. No, no. Where, where, where they're at right now is not used for retention. Yeah. It is town property. Uh, uh, there was no anticipated need for that property. Thank you. And if I might ask, Mr. Chairman, this is uh, north of 45th? South of 45th. Well, the drawing shows, okay. Yes, I see. 45th Street and then Kennedy Circle, I was thinking, but it's, no, it's south. Yeah. Will this have an impact on the proposed West Lakes Corridor? I don't know the answer to that question. Because my understanding is they're going to come east of the tracks. <coughs> and that's where this electrical business <coughs> is. I just wondered if that should be studied to make sure there's not a conflict. I think that's a, a valid point to call to attention the engineers from Dixie and the engineers from Mexico. 
I mean, those that's, that double track is going to be on the east side if it comes, and that's where it looks like right where this is. I would agree. Do we want to approve this pending an engineering study to make sure that there isn't conflict? Well, I think the question before you, we can certainly do that, uh, and that's a totally legitimate thing to do. But I would, I think, from a layperson's perspective, the question being asked is, does NIPSCO have your approval to put three power lines there? Not whether NIPSCO should, or what will happen to another condemning authority if NIPSCO puts those power lines there, but do you, as the town council, believe that you would like to give them the right to put the power lines there? I would say yes, as long as it's not in the way of the right of way. Say that again, John. I would say yes, as long as it's not in the way of the right of way for the train. I mean, I think that makes sense. It doesn't make sense to put in the poles. I think we should approve it, but I don't think it makes sense to put the poles in and then have to relocate them. I mean, that's the money wasted. <coughs> Plus, you're going to then potentially have a power interruption for Francisca. Correct. Uh, to uh, Councillor Bennett's point, that right away hasn't been established in this corridor yet. They, they have to acquire it. So in the process of acquiring that property, if the project goes forward, this would be something that is disclosed and dealt with in the right of way acquisition process. By Nixie yeah. and NIPSCO. Well, I understand that, but as an engineer, it doesn't make sense to do something twice, but I understand. I agree. Technically, it's not there, but in theory, they know where they want to put it, so it's not an unknown potential. Correct. I, I don't know. Whatever the other counselors think, but I think it makes sense to, to at least disclose that. Absolutely. And they, NIPSCO should, you know, they don't want to spend the money twice and take an interruption at Francisco, I would think. I would think as well. Thank you, Councilor is there any other discussion? I'll entertain a motion. What's your pleasure? I make a, I make a motion to approve the easement for NIPSCO as long as staff is satisfied that it won't interfere with the proposed future right of way for the Westlake Corridor Extension. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Schaefer, please call the roll. Sir. <coughs> Councilor Coderitis. Yes. Votes yes. Councilor Nellens. Yes. Votes yes. Councilor Reed. Yes. Votes yes. President Sandinetto. Yes. Votes yes. Four to zero. Thank you. That takes us to the dump truck. Earlier this year, you granted approval to purchase uh, two single axle dump trucks. And the long and short of it is there's an opportunity to save $4,000 on that purchase. But when staff asked you to approve that purchase, we did not include the option for the early trade-in and the transfer of title. And because that is a transaction, uh, you need to approve that. So what we're asking for is the approval to trade in those trucks and surrender title for the break-in price for the dump trucks that we are going to uh, purchase. The trucks in question are not used during the summer. There's going to be no operational uh, impact. But uh, credit where credit's due, the clerk of <coughs> office brought this to our attention, and we want to cross our T's and dot our I's. So we're going to ask permission to uh, conduct this transaction. How soon after uh, they turn these trucks in for this early discount and that savings? How long before they get the new one? I believe that these are trucks that have to be built to spec, and I, I think it's going to be like 30 to 45 days. I can give you a concrete answer after I talk with uh, okay. the public works director and we call the vendor. But not long enough that we'd end up not having them available when we need oh, them. Oh, for the winter season, no. Okay. I think it's October. I think it's October. Yeah. Thanks. Councilor, what's your pleasure? Move we approve the early trade in of the two used dump trucks for the $4,000 discounted center, resulting in the revised net cost of $285,368 after the trade in for the two new dump trucks. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? 
There being none, Mr. Schaefer, please call the roll. Mr. Rimini, Councilor Colbert, yes. Vote yes. Councilor Nella, yes. Vote yes. Councilor Reed, yes. Vote yes. President Salmonetta, yes. Vote yes. Four to zero. Thank you. That takes us to reports. There are none. Announcements All town council meetings will begin at 7 p.m. unless otherwise noted. July 17th, town council work study. And that is still on. I saw some discussion going back and forth on that. Uh, July 24th, Special Town Council and Redevelopment Commission meeting. July 31st, no meeting. August 7th, Regular Town Council and Redevelopment Commission meeting. August 14th, no meeting. August 21st, Regular Town Council and Redevelopment Commission meeting. I will entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. You guys want to move?